How are we doing today, folks? Once again, I'm back with another tech-related video. This time a little more on the fun side than anything else. Uh, Newegg was having a sale on uh, one of their daily deal specials, and I couldn't resist, to tell you the truth. It is a remote-controlled helicopter. Uh, it's the N9808, and uh, it's by RC Hobby, a Chinese company, basically. And it's just uh, infrared, uh, but the thing that really sparked my interest is not only does it have the gyroscopic blades, uh, but it actually has a aluminum body uh, on it. So it seemed to be like it would actually hold up a little more. And uh, a lot of the reviews I read, obviously, they're all up and down. That's all people ever... There's either people that love things or hate things that post things on the internet. So um, they... Uh, the reviews for the most part were pretty good, uh, specifically for the price. I only paid like 20 some bucks for it with shipping, so I couldn't say no, really. I've always wanted one, and I just never did it. I uh, played well with, with, my, with uh, some of my other family members, but um, it's actually a decent sized one. It's about 7 8 inches long, somewhere there. Uh, they say uh, 230 millimeters long by 185 by 90. Uh, it's a uh, pretty nice little helicopter to tell you the truth. It actually works quite well. Um, I've already played with it actually, but I put it back in the box how it came so I can do a little unboxing to show how, I, how it comes. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll get into it and uh, see what you think of it. So, like I said, here's the box. I've already opened it once, but uh, we're going to do a little opening here. And of course, I've got the video in the hand this time, so it's going to be a one hand opening operation for the most part. But the first box that comes out is where all the controller and everything it comes with the, the instruction booklet, which is you know, obviously in Chinese. And of course, they translate it to English, but their English skills are not the best. If you ever pause the video, I guess there you go. But basically, it kind of gives very vague definitions. The big thing that it says here put the six, six AA batteries in a charging switch. Uh, socket, which actually does not look like that at all. It's actually a round plug rather than a two prong. It's a round one. Um, and what comes with it actually comes with two ways to charge your helicopter. And like any of these small ones, inside the uh, bay door here, there's actually a charging cord, which this will plug directly into the helicopter. And then this green light will uh, stay lit while it's charging to tell you that it's charging, and then it will go out when it's done charging. Uh, it is a three-channel, which is kind of nice. A, B, C, so you can actually have multiple helicopters running at the same time, I would assume. And then the on-off button, obviously. It blinks when it's searching for it, and then it goes solid red when it actually connects to the helicopter. The other charging way is via USB, which I use, so I don't wear the batteries out on this. I plug this guy into my computer, or just recently, I just uh, last time I charged it, I plugged this into a uh, cell phone adapter just into the wall and then plug this into the helicopter and worked just great. So, and this one's opposite. This one is uh, red. When you plug it in, as soon as it receives power, this will light up. And I can show you that here shortly. Um, and then when you plug this into the helicopter and it's charging, the light will go out. And when it's done charging, the light will come back on. So this is, uh, this is a little different. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so basically, this go, I'm not going to go over the instructions. It is it is what it is. Chinese person translated into English, English, it's not translated the best, but it works. And of course, the helicopter itself, which uh, I'm going to reach in here and grab my music. Here we go. This guy is actually held into place by a piece of plastic and tape very well, actually. It's already been ripped once because of when I removed it, but uh, all I did is remove the tape. And then there's a piece of plastic that basically holds the, those guys into place. You pull that out, and then you can slide the helicopter legs out, and then slowly bring him out through the hole. And there it is. Uh, there's my hand, and there's the size of the helicopter. It's, you know, a nice pump size. It doesn't weigh very much. Uh, to be honest, actually, it has a lot more lifting power than we thought. We so we actually attached this little copper piece to the bottom here last night. 
and then hooked uh, an aluminum carabiner on this. And this little helicopter was able to lift it off the ground. If we added anything more than that, it actually so it would come. It, you know, it couldn't get it really off the ground very much. But the amount of weight that it can actually pull is a lot more than I thought it would be. Um, very agile little guy as well. I mean, it does quite well snooping around. So, as you can see, like I said, aluminum. Uh, this is where the on-off switch is right here. It's just a little switch, a circuit board switch. Now, the other side is where the charging plug is. There's CHA for charge. That's just that circular plug. Uh, the Obviously, gyroscopic meaning one blade springs one way and one swings the other way. So when it's opposite, it maintains a real nice sta stability. And then the tail forward, all this guy does, it stays off unless you use it. And all it uh, is to do is to lift the tail or push the tail down like this to go backwards or go forward. And uh, it's very stable. And it's actually easier than I thought it was going to be. But at the same time, it is, it, it's still a tricky guy to run. Uh, but we had it going around the room the first time we had it out uh, on last night so but yeah there she is plastic but also you know some a little more rigid with the with the aluminum here and uh, the aluminum tail so let's get up here uh, if uh, there is a way to uh, if the craft was to uh, go forward and backward a lot or uh, left or right, I'm sorry. It's hard to talk at the same time like this. Who is slowly twisting. There is uh, actually a rotary switch on the remote to tell it which way do I have to uh, correct for. So basically it's kind of like a trim. So right now it's slowly turning to the right. I'm going to make it go back to the left a little bit so it stays where it's solid. So there she is. Fly very regular. Oh. Uh, if I can get it to balance out here, I'll do it with just a few little tricks. Stop talking and more concentrate on what the heck I'm doing. I go to the left, I go to the right, I go forward, I'm going to go slowly forward. There we go. I'm going to go backward. And if I want to increase in height, I just of course, I'm going to try to, I'm still a dominance, you know, I'm not the most versed in this stuff, but. Ah, I was a little off. But, obviously you can see with some practice, you can really get this guy down. It is a lot more stable than I thought, specifically for the price point. But, uh, she, uh, <laughs> what I did find is that when you're at really low RPMs, just taking off, right at the beginning is where, right when it's taking off, it either goes to one side or the other, or sometimes forward and back, and, but when you get the RPMs up, and I think it's probably more of this counterweight, it levels itself off a lot more, but, uh, as with anything, starting and stopping is the is the critical point. So I'll get back a little bit this time. But she is a lot of fun. Tell you what, we've had a lot of fun. My kids love it. I have a one-year-old and she just just giggles and loves watching it. Sorry about the point view here. And if you didn't see that, I have a CD rack over here, and she just clips. And it's very resilient. I've had a lot of different objects with it so far, because obviously I'm learning how to fly it more and more. Uh, but it's very resilient to breakage. I haven't broken anything. It does not come with any extra rotor blades or anything. I'm going to buy at least a couple sets, probably, because they're only like 3 bucks. I think, is where I, so far as what I found them for. 
definitely worth having an extra pair, especially for how much fun this guy is to fly. But, I mean, you can fly it a lot faster than Roger. I'm just trying to keep it in the camera view. I haven't flown it outside yet, because obviously if you look at the background, it's snowing. But, let me uh, keep it on low here. I'll show you up close and personal. If I go forward, that's where you can see the, the backward. If I go backward, forward, then if, you can't see it, but if I go left or right, we'll change the speed. It's all in this bottom rotor set that the left and right trim is, is put into place. And uh, for flying time, I mean, you're basically looking about five, five to ten minutes. They say, I think, eight to, eight to twelve or something like that. I mean, I think it's twelve, but I would say strict, probably on average, seven, eight minutes probably. That's what I'm normally about getting, but I would say five to eight would be more than adequate to be put. See if I can land this thing over time. There we go. Yeah. Final small little thing. I was going to show you what it happened when it started to die. This is what it's like when the battery starts dying. Basically, it just can't lift off anymore. I'm trying to control it, obviously. It just doesn't have enough lift anymore. So if I'm full throttle. And then it just automatically kills itself. If I try again, it'll just kill itself. So that tells you lights are still on, the bad, there's still enough battery in there so you're not killing the battery. Turn it off, and then either A, open up your little controller here, and pull out the little charger cable, which I've only charged this way once. Take the charger cable, plug it in, turn this on. Glows green, saying that it's charging. And uh, when this goes off, it's done. The other option you have is using the yellow USB cable that comes with it. Now, if I was to just plug the U the cable into the helicopter, it will grow a little red because there's no other, it's, it can't, it's not charging. If I, same way if, if I plug it into my little probe adapter here, plug it into the power, it glows red. However, if it's charging, it will not glow red. So as soon as I put it into this dead helicopter here, the glow goes off, telling me that it is charging the unit. As soon as it's done, this will glow back again. It's the opposite of what the actual controller does. The controller glows when charging, it is off when it's not, which I had to do it myself to figure it out. It's off of the USB charger when it's charging and on when it's done. So it's give and take about, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on, well, I've, I don't know if I've had to go too much over 30 minutes, but it's about a 30 to 45 minute charge. It's how long it charges either way from the battery pack on the controller or the USB. I do it this way just so I don't kill my batteries on my controller. So if I'm doing this outside of my house, then I can use my controller. By all means, uh, I give this one a, a big old thumbs up, specifically at the price point. It's not the best one on the market, but at... 20 well i think you can probably still find them online for 25 bucks or so um or new eggs sell them at 40 i wouldn't do that <laughs> but uh um absolutely at the price point it's it's a price you can't it's hard to beat at least but uh again this was the 9808 rc helicopter and uh again if you have any questions please comment below and i will do my best to answer them or point you in the direction that would be a best answer and i'm all of course as we build viewer base, then more people will be able to answer maybe even better than I do because I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but uh, I like making videos. So, Also, we have the subscribe button up above. Please click it. Uh, I'd appreciate it. You subscribe to me and maybe I'll subscribe to you. So it's a win-win situation, I think, for anybody. Thanks again for watching my videos. And uh, if you have any uh, suggestions on future products, let me know. Again, this is the Tech Gooch saying adios.